All right, guys, so most of you already know that I did attend the 2023 Milwaukee Pipeline in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, only a few weeks ago. So today we're gonna to be sharing some footage that we captured while we are at the event and going over some of the new tools that are now or soon to be available, along with a little bit of footage of the event itself and some of the sites that we saw over the 30 hours or so that I was in town there. Wow, so three airports later, we just landed in Milwaukee. Brand new hotel. So once I confirmed that I was attending, a gentleman called me up on the phone by the name of Paul Salgado. He runs the Power Element podcast out of California. The only other attendee to the Pipeline event that was affiliated in any way, shape, or form with the power line industry. So Paul was a lineman himself. He still works in the industry and on the side he runs the Power Element podcast. So be sure to check that out. We had a wicked conversation. We talked for like an hour, an hour and a half. Felt like I knew the guy for years. Really cool guy to talk to. We were kind of talking about some ideas for the event. And of course, once we arrived from the airport, we were gonna be sure to hook up and definitely have a beer with each other. Actually, I'm gonna back it up. So in Chicago, while I was waiting, Kind of looking around, I seen two or three guys that had a little bit of Milwaukee gear. One was wearing a ball cap, one had a book bag, and uh, a couple guys. One was from uh, TY Customs, and the other were from Completely Cordless. So I just kind of walked up, introduced myself. I said, Are you guys going to the Pipeline event? Of course they were. So we hung out with them for a bit, jumped on the plane, was sitting pretty well right beside them, which was cool. Landed in Milwaukee to at which point we ordered an Uber. Three of us jumped in the Uber and went to the hotel, downtown Milwaukee. Not bad, not bad. Group three. We got ourselves some work pants. Very nice, very nice. All right, cool. The hotel was right across the street from the Milwaukee Bucks Stadium. Can you imagine you're walking down the street and you see like Giannis or something like that? You're like, wow, starstruck. Anyways, so went into the hotel and uh, there was a whole bunch of reps, management people from Milwaukee in there. There was a big welcoming thing, kind of talked to some of these people on the phone many a times, back and forth on emails. So it was really cool to meet these people in person. They were all incredible people, crazy friendly, really intelligent, knowledgeable, um, just very, very inviting. You felt at home as soon as you walked in. So we drive downtown and you just see this written in red right across the building in Milwaukee. And man, it was it was pretty cool. So got a couple selfies with, uh, with the guys throughout that night. Again, met a ton of incredible people. Uh, Roger Wakefield, uh, Andy Jones from Rooted Arborists, Dirt Monkey, Plemons Lawn Care, George the Plumber. That's only to name a few. So we kind of hooked up, walk into the building. They have this Milwaukee Harley sitting on the floor. You walk in and you can see up. There was just balconies that wrapped around. And in the center, they had a little stage stadium kind of thing set up. There was a big meet and greet. There was drinks, there was food, there was people everywhere. And absolutely Every person you talked to was just hyped. Everyone was so friendly, glad to be there. You could just kind of roam around and, and, and mingle with everyone. It was, it was really cool. So we hung out for the night there, had a few drinks, talked with people, and jumped on the bus, headed back to the hotel. We had a couple more drinks and crashed out after a long day because we had to wake up at six in the morning to head over to the event. So we wake up the next morning, and feel pretty good. So again, we jump onto a bus and this time we head to a different location. It was probably a half hour drive or so. And we get off the bus and there was a, the craziest welcome ever. It was basically like all the staff were cheering and we pull right up to almost like a red carpet arrival to this event. So that was different. It was, it was pretty neat. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that.
So we go into the building and they have this like theater room, vent room kind of thing. And there's just like music going, there's a screen. The room was cool. The room, you couldn't tell all where the walls ended against the floor. The screens, it was all projected uh, video screen right around the room. And we sat there and we were introduced to uh, the CEO and multiple of the VPs and management team from Milwaukee who all spoke. Simply amazing. It was incredibly interesting to hear their story and their thoughts and beliefs in, in, in the company and how to make tools and, and how to grow as a company. They're, it's, it's really cool to hear how much effort and how much heart they put into the stuff they research and build. And most importantly, how much they listen to the end user, which is why they have events like this, to show the new products, but also to get feedback from users out in the field. They've raised the bar so high for battery operated, lithium battery operated tools that they're literally competing against themselves as they redesign these tools that are already top shelf, like top of the market stuff. So that, that, was, that was really cool. It's, it's really impressive to see all this behind the scenes stuff and how a company like this functions. So after the presentation, we go out into this, it was bigger than a, than a gym, like a high school gym. And there was just thousands and thousands of tools. Now in years past, what they do, they take all the electrical guys, all the plumbers, all the general contractors. You'd go over to your section, section of the gym and you check out the new tools that are on the market and, and kind of try them out. They'd actually have some, some stuff set up. If it's a concrete drill, they'd have a block of concrete. You drill into the concrete. You actually get to test how well these tools work. You're allowed to video and document stuff as you go. They were doing interviews, lots of stuff going on. And this pretty much lasted for the entire afternoon. So what was cool about this year is you weren't confined to the tools that only involved your trade. There was a presentation for each and every division. Know, you're working with our users and contractors in the field. Um, it's not just about outside versus inside, it's about um, the nuances within a power utility um, divisions in terms of are you a trouble crew versus an overhead crew versus an underground crew, specialty crews, all these other things and nuance that we learn by working in the field through users. And when I say there's thousands of tools, there was literally thousands of, of tools. There was clothing, Milwaukee clothing, their packouts, of course, their concrete drills and finishing equipment along with some lighting. You've got your general contracting, plumbing, power utility and electrical, automotive, the made in USA hand tools, outdoor equipment. And we were actually allowed to go hands on with absolutely everything. So some of the stuff more geared towards this channel, which covers power lines, well, they released the 12T Kearney die linear crimper. There's some companies that prefer and already have a, a built up stock with Kearney dies. So they now have a crimper that's compatible with that. There's the 12T latched linear crimper, the 11T dialless latched linear crimper. We already saw in a previous video, the five inch wireless cutter, all stuff that we're gonna see in some upcoming videos as I try out and use some of this equipment. But as I said, where we were free to roam into the other departments, which was great because a lot of trades do overlap with the equipment they use. My, my favorite section to go into outside of utility electrical stuff was the outdoor equipment because we, we deal with vegetation calls, tree calls all the time, being on call, working on power lines. They do have a new pulse, a battery pole saw, which I actually tested with another follow line this up side by side. We went one, two, three, go and cut through like a 10 inch log using the leading competitor gas saw versus the 18 volt battery saw, which was faster than the gas saw. And I'm not gonna mention the brand, but the gas saw we tested it against, I do carry on my truck and it is a wicked saw. And the lithium battery saw beat it. Like hands down beat it. Was 
way easier to use and has many other advantages, which I will probably do a video on that piece of equipment in itself because there's a lot of really cool stuff that makes it a superior product for a, a pole saw. Another piece of equipment that caught my eye and you guys kind of laugh, but uh, a vacuum. They have a shot vac, like a six gallon shot vac that runs off of batteries. And I was like, I could use that. I need a vacuum. This truck is incredibly dirty right now. All right, so we've literally just unboxed our six gallon wet dry vac along with a ton of accessories. After trying this out to both clean my basement and the cabin my truck, highly recommend it for any trade, homeowner, garage, whatever. Biggest reason is no cords to drag around, especially at our shop at the office. We've got a huge garage. It packs like half a dozen tandem axle trucks along with all of our trouble trucks. It doesn't work out. You get like 100 feet of extension cord. Not fun. This guy here, super portable. It easily comes off the wheel cart that comes in, locks in place, super easy to use. This guy here, these flex hoses, they're great for getting in those tight spaces in the truck. We've also got this accessory bag, which fastens right onto the top of the vacuum. Some of our substation techs do carry them in their vans. They're great for cleaning up the inside of pad mount transformers. If there is some residual water, the vacuum's gonna kick that water on the bottom that the pump can't quite reach. The model number for this guy is 0910-20. It does come in a few different sizes, and there's all kinds of different attachments that are trade focused. So after we had a chance to check out all the tools and equipment, we sat down, myself and Paul Salgado, and recorded a podcast right there in the middle of the event. At this point in the day, we're both getting kind of tired. If you want to check out the podcast, I'll see if I can put a link. I think he posted it on YouTube as well. So I'll put that link down below if you want to check that out. The, the podcast name is The Power Element Podcast. And when you listen to the podcast... You can, you can hear all the background noise, guys running power tools like crazy. So it's not the best quality audio wise, but that was kind of on purpose because we wanted to record that at the event. So you can hear right in the background that there, there's dozens of people trying out these new tools and equipment. We're, we're recording this right in the middle of this event. But we did that, recorded that, and started to wrap things up and headed for supper, which was really cool. They had whole like rooftop booked off security guy show your id tag you go in there was some live music and again there was a bar set up and food everywhere so there's just like tables of food and drinks there was uh we had our own bartender there any kind of drink you wanted mixed up they'd mix that up so we hung out on the rooftop and again chatted with all kinds of people there so we we stayed there for probably four or five hours Got lots of food into us, lots of drinks. Went back to the hotel and up onto the rooftop of the hotel where, again, we had a couple more drinks, but I did have to wake up at 4 a.m. to catch the flight home. So we had to take her easy, of course. So towards near the end of the night, when uh, a lot of guys were starting to pack it in for the night, me and Paul hung out on the roof and uh, had one last drink together. Pretty much said our goodbyes and went back to the hotel room. And man, yeah, that uh, last 30 hours of my life went by just in a blink of an eye. So super, I feel super fortunate to have been able to experience that. A big thanks to Milwaukee for not only putting on the event, but for organizing amongst all the, the people that went there, especially me sitting out here on the east coast of Canada that gets very easily forgotten about. It was, uh, it was a trip of a lifetime, even though it was extremely quick, had an absolute blast, made lots, made lots of new friends, had a really good time. So just thought I'd share that with you guys, show you guys, like I said, a little bit of the exclusive footage from the event. I have a lot of respect for, for Milwaukee as a company and the way they do things. And like I said, the way they listen to its end user feedback they get from people 
how they take that into account as they design and redesign their tools. We will definitely take a closer look at some of the other tools that we saw very, very briefly in this video. But until then, guys, stay safe. I got to turn the AC back on in my truck. So we'll see you guys all soon. Thanks for watching, as always, and stay safe.